Hello everyone, welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. So, today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create a round script. Now, you guys have been asking a lot, uh, a lot for this kind of tutorial down in the comments below. So, I'm like, why not create a round script for you guys? By the way, I just want to say I apologize for the shortage of those two Roblox Studio tutorials. I'm going to be covering... A uh, big one today, not very big one, but a very helpful one. Anyways, let's go ahead and get right into it. So first of all, in the server script service, we're going to insert a server script and name this main. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, increase the letters here so you guys can see. We're going to go ahead and start off with making a round variables comment. And on that, we're going to do time int is equal to 60. And we're going to do numbers read as seconds. Now, so basically, this will be how many seconds the round will last for. And then we're going to create another comment, round objects. And we're going to create a round object, and this is going to be a string value. And this is going to be called status. Whoops, not status. Uh, status. In the actual round objects here, we're going to name this a lowercase status. And then we're going to make it equal to game dot replicated storage dot status. Now, the reason why we're putting in replicated storage is so we can actually access it from a local script instead of just accessing it from a server script. So next, we're going to go ahead and make the main script here. So we're going to start off with a while wait and then do. And then in here, we're going to do a for i is equal to time int 1, negative 1, not 0, 1, a negative 1, do. Now, let's go ahead and explain this. So instead of doing a while true do loop, so uh, so if we had to do a while true do loop, a we would have to include a wait in here if we never included a wait anywhere. And uh, if we do this, we don't never have to include a wait. And also, just it's just better. It's, you just get in the habit of doing this. And the i is equal to time int. Uh, i stands for the time this will loop through. 1 is uh, it, it, int, it, the main integer. And then negative, whoops, I accidentally put a comma there. And then negative 1 here, uh, what it does is it makes it so... Uh, it goes down each one. So if we had a 60, which we do have 60, it'll go uh, 60 to 59 to 58, and then when it does that, it'll loop through. Next, we're going to make it so it waits every second when looping, and then we're going to set status dot value equal to in quotation marks game colon space dot dot i dot dot, and then more quotation space seconds. And that's basically our round script. Not that hard to create. Uh, you can do the for loop for anything like an intermission, game uh, map choosing, game mode choosing. You can do it for pretty much anything. Um, so, and actually, let's just go ahead and for the round script, let's just go ahead and create another local variable and lat round variables. And we'll do uh, int time is equal to 60. And this will stand for intermission time. Uh, numbers read as seconds so we're going to do for time uh for i equals in time equal uh and then one negative one do and then we're going to do exact same thing uh but for this time instead of game we're going to do intermission so there we go now we have an intermission time and we also have our game time now let's say, wait, I wanted to be able to display this for my users. Well, that's actually pretty simple. So let me lay it down for you before we actually get started. So first of all, what you do is you create a framework script and you place it in the starter player and then starter player local scripts. So we'll go ahead and open this all for, uh, for us first. So starter player, open that, and then we'll have starter player scripts. So we're going to go ahead and create the basic framework right here. Framework. And we'll delete that, and then we'll exit, and that'll be uh, saved for us later. 
Now, uh, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna be able to we're gonna create a GUI. We're gonna create a screen GUI, then put a frame in there, and then a title in there. And then the framework we're gonna be making a function which will allow us to change the text to the value of status every time it changes. Pretty simple, and let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go ahead and insert a screen GUI into Starter GUI, and we're gonna name this main. Then we're going to go ahead and insert a frame, and we're going to name it top. We're going to make X1, so we can make it go across, but you can make it any size. We're going to make the Y 0.1, and we're going to make this invisible. Next, we're going to insert a text label, and this will be named title. Uh, we're going to make this one text scaled, name, make the text color white, and whoops and i meant to change text stroke transparencies at zero and then we're going to make this one one on scale for x and y not the pokemon game by the way and we're going to make the text nothing and i'm just going to make the source sans light because that's uh it's one of my favorite uh fonts and then we're actually going to get started so we're going to create client variables uh, and we're going to go ahead and make local status is equal to game dot replicated storage dot. Uh, let's see. What do we want? Oh, status. And now we're going to do uh, client functions, which will be function update title. And then here we're going to go ahead and do. Oh, and we should actually create a GUI variable variable as well. Local GUI equals. And then we're also going to create another one, which is going to be local player is equal to game dot players dot local player. And then we're going to do player wait for child player GUI. And then we're going to create a local title is equal to GUI dot main dot top dot title. There you go, and that's your basic uh, variables there. And we're just going to do title dot text is equal to status dot value. So we're going to call the update title, and we're going to create another one, uh, client main, and then we're going to call the we're going to call the function, and then we're going to create a new uh, line here. And this is going to be status dot change connect and update title, and we're pretty much it. And that's uh, that's pretty much all of it. So what we're doing is we're setting a variable for status, and then we're getting the local player or our player. Then we're getting our player's GUI. We're gonna find the title or our text label, and then in the, we're gonna set a function called update title. So it will change the text equal to status's value, and then we're gonna call that first so we can get what it's equal to, and then we're gonna get status dot changed connect update title. So every time status's value is changed or anything on status that changed it will set our text to the value of status and the reason why we're able to um, the reason why we're able to be able to contact status or uh, be able to use status is because it's replicated storage and replicated storage is being a, uh, is able to be accessed by a local script and also by a server script so that's our basic framework right there should uh, give it that red dot and uh, in here and that's basically it as well so now, if we go ahead and press play, you guys will see we won't get an error, and we will also get this intermission 60. So let's go ahead and make this uh, 5 seconds. We'll make this uh, like 3 seconds, and we'll make this 5. Because, you know, uh, usually the... Actually, we should make this 3, and we'll make this 5. So we'll wait exactly 8 seconds. Oh, what am I doing? I had it correct the first time because the round, the actual round time is always longer than uh, the intermission time. So we have intermission three, two, one, and we're gonna wait game five, four, three, two, one, and it loops, which is pretty neat. So um, this tutorial it was not very hard; it's for beginners. But you guys uh, suggested this to me, and you guys wanted to know how it works, so I created it for you. Not that hard. Anyways, I want to say thank you guys for watching. Um, if this uh, helped you out or if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you have any problems, then go ahead and comment that down below. 
uh, if someone will help you or either I will help you and also comment down some ideas for tutorials because you guys bring in the good ideas anyways you guys are amazing thank you for all the support I apologize for the lack of the videos anyways thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time bye bye